Hey, what's up everyone? I'm still in the same area as the last video. I'm kind of running low on food and I gotta go find some water today. But uh, before I leave this area, there's one more mountain summit that I want to try. So I'm gonna start off this video with uh, some hiking. Then after that, we'll head back to the city, get resupplied and who knows, maybe I can get the slow cooker out again. So I've been using this Katadyne Hiker Pro to filter water out in the wilderness. I bought this last summer when I was out on my bike tour. Um, before this I had the MSR Trail Shot. It's one of the smallest and lightest ones out there but uh, it's just really really slow and tedious to use. I don't think it's meant for uh, daily use where you need large volumes. It's just kind of an emergency backup for day hikes. So I decided to switch over to this one and uh, it's really fast and easy to use. Um, you got to be really careful with the water source that uh, you choose. It's got to be almost crystal clear. I filtered some silty water once and it immediately clogged up my filter. I thought I ruined it and I'd have to buy a new one. It took a couple weeks but I finally got it clean again and it's working good again. So you got to be really careful with that. Uh, but one feature that I really like with this is that you can plug the outlet hose directly into your water bladder so you can get this thing like 110% full and you don't have to worry about spillage at all. I've been watching the weather forecast and there's supposed to be rain coming in at uh, noon so I'm going to head out now. It's about 3.30 a.m. going to do the graveyard shift on this one. It's about a 26 kilometer round trip up there to Nines Peak with about uh, 1500 meters of elevation gain. I think nine hours is a generous amount of time for something like this. But uh, it's kind of chilly out, uh, about 5 degrees Celsius. It's around uh, 40 degrees in your freedom units but uh, I'm going to finish up my coffee and get going. You think for all these rocks he'd stumble upon one gold nugget out here? Elon Musk, he thinks that reality is all just a simulation. What kind of processing power would you need to model all these rocks? Texture map and add physics? What kind of computer would you need for that? And could it run Crisis? That's the question. Crisis 2 was alright. Not nearly as good as the first one. I've never played three. That was about the time that uh, I started losing interest in gaming and getting into real life adventures, putting myself to the test. I still play the odd game though. The more simplistic ones appeal to me. I liked Hotline Miami. The cave was really good. Celeste. Can't wait for Super Meat Boy 2 to come out. It's 6.30 now, a little over halfway there. Nine's Peak is on the other side of this. I should get a view of it soon. I gotta find a better way to go back. This rock, you think you got a safe place to put your hand or your foot, and it just crumbles off. It was a mistake trying to come up this side. Got myself totally stuck. If you're watching this, somebody has found my phone and they put this video together. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. I think I'm back on track, but what a mess this is. Covered in mud, got mud butt. I had to put my crampons on too, it's just a little section of ice, couldn't get past. There's got to be a better way out of here than the way I'm taking in. I should have came around and up this side and it would have been so much easier. But, uh, where are we? Oh, right there in the middle, that is Nine's Peak. So I'm going to have to go over that way, I don't know. Looks kind of treacherous there. I'm getting there. I'm doing my best to avoid all these avalanche paths. Got one more slope to go up 
And then uh, one last question. Can I get across that ridge to the summit over there? A loud cracking noise is the last thing you want to hear in a situation like this. I probably develop a different kind of mud butt. I'm on the approach to the summit now. It's 11 o'clock. It's supposed to be back to the van by now. The clouds are starting to come in. So close to the summit. I'm not going to take the drone out. The clouds are starting to get really dark here. I'm just going to touch the summit and uh, motor on out of here. I can't believe I made it. I can't believe I did that. Wow. I don't care about snow. As long as it's not raining. It's really starting to look like winter here. Looks like I made it down just in time. But uh, that was definitely the way to go. I could have saved myself days had I gone up that way. But the rest is easy, so I'll see you guys back at the van. Oh, finally! <laughs> nice rainbow trout. Alright, I got my whopper of a rainbow trout all cleaned up. There's a conservation guy outside. He wants to take a DNA sample off it. He's giving me a hard time. Enjoy your snack, he says. I'm pretty happy with this. It was a long time coming. I tried to get another one, but... Uh, this is all I could get. I'm going to uh, put some flour on it and some lemon pepper, garlic powder, sea salt, and fry it up with some butter. I'm probably use the induction tonight. And finally, after over a year of this thing not staying put, I put a stopper on there today. It took a long time to get around to that. Well, it's much better now, though. So, probably just do this right on the pan here. Well, I hope this is the first meal of many. It turned out so good. I want another one. Oh. <laughs> well, it's not a foresty forest video without a slow cook. I'm going to do up some pulled pork today. I've got a tenderloin and I'm going to start out by giving it a rub. But before I do anything, I'm going to cut it in half and uh, put it in my pot and try to contain some of this mess. Just going to give this a splash of oil. So for my rub, I'm going to use chili powder, ground cumin, garlic powder, ground mustard, brown sugar. I use about a tablespoon of each of those and then some salt and pepper.
Okay, these are all coated now, so I'm gonna set them in my slow cooker just for a second while I heat up this pot. I've got to uh, just brown them up a bit. These are all browned up now. I'm gonna move them on into the slow cooker. And finally, we'll add some uh, chicken broth in there. Now we have to wait about, uh, I don't know, I'd say four or five hours on low. All right, my pork is just about done, so I gotta make up some toppings for this sandwich. I'm gonna take it to the next level. I'm following a recipe by Sam the Cooking Guy. If you wanna check out his video, I'll link to it down below in the description. But uh, first I gotta make up some buttermilk. So I'm gonna use about half of this container and a uh, half tablespoon of lemon juice. So while that's setting up, I'm going to slice up some onion as thin as I possibly can. We'll let these onions soak in the buttermilk for about an hour, I think. I'm going to make up the barbecue sauce now with uh, some mustard. Ketchup, garlic powder, pepper, and apple cider vinegar. Okay, I got some cabbage here and I'm gonna mix in some mayo, celery salt, black pepper, Kalula and some apple cider vinegar. All right, All right so I drained the buttermilk off my onions and now I'm just gonna uh, put some flour in there and uh, toss it around, try to coat them. These are all coated in flour. I think the best way to do this would be to uh, deep fry it, but I don't want to do that in here, so I'm just going to fry them up on uh, the pan with some butter. Turned out alright. It took longer to make this sandwich than it did to catch a fish, but I think it's going to be worth every bite. That's absolutely incredible. This could be the best pulled pork sandwich I've ever had in my life. Well, if you got half a day to kill and you want to taste possibly the very best pulled pork you've ever had in your life, then I highly recommend giving this recipe a shot. But uh, I gotta get some exercise now and work this off. So uh, thanks for watching and thank you to Patreon supporters and I'll see you in the next one.